Okay. Yeah, it's the button is already there. I have missed it. Okay. Uh, so that's why I just want to mention Python is very much case sensitive. If I just declare it capital VAR. Okay. Now I'm printing small VAR. It should be showing error. Because the name where is not defined. I'm just printing where, but it's not able to understand what is small. This V is cap, but this V is small. So it's showing the error where is not defined. Did you mean where? So it has the intelligence. It's checking whether, I mean, which nearest value it can pick up, which nearest variable it can pick up. It's also giving me hints. So yes. I'm define. I mean, I'm trying to mean VAR, so I can just update it. Okay, so Python is case sensitive language. So I was just checking with different kind of data types: integer, float, boolean, string. Means that state of character that I just mentioned with the hello keyword. Okay. Okay. One next topic. I'm just going. Okay. So, uh, list tuple set dictionary will be coming through this thing with some more detailing part. In today's chapter, we'll be trying to cover list dictionary. Okay. Let's go ahead with some inbuilt function available for the for this kind of data types. There are four data types. What are the available? inbuilt function okay let's see before that let's cover up f string what is f string okay uh, till now any doubt from anyone maybe if you have already experienced in python then uh, you are quite aware of those stuffs already so maybe this thing is very basic to all of you but if it's totally new for you then uh, really it should be helping you out okay now, what is f string? In the print function, if I want to print, okay, I'm printing the variable value over here, that is fine. If I want to print a variable as well as a particular hard coded string value, suppose I'm just trying to print the variable. Okay, if I just want to put some hard coded string that should be included by code. So I'm putting a code, the variable value is put. No issue. Okay, so till this much, I can say till this much. Let's declare the variable where as seven. I'm just for sake of my programming purpose, I'm just updating small v. This should be also small v. Let's delete this thing. Okay. I want this thing to be print. This thing is from my user defined string. And this thing is the variable. If I return, I mean run this thing, it is also in, it is there inside the quotation, this code. So that is why it's also determined as a string. <coughs> it's not been detected as a variable over here in this line. So if I want to print this kind of stuff in a single print statement, the variable as well as the string. If I want to do this thing, what to do? We need to use f string. F string is a method to print both of them in a single print statement. I can omit this thing. I can use a different print statement. It is possible. Over here, I can only print where. So this is not enclosed by quotation. It should be returning the variable value. The value, the variable value is seven. Or let me put a colon there. Okay, 
but i don't want this way i want it's in a single line how to do that it's called f string put a f over here and that should be enclosed by curly braces okay if i put this thing that means it's a variable it's not a string part yes so till this stuff it's a user defined string and this stuff it's a variable it's it's going to replace it okay so i think it's understandable what is f string if not please tell me moving to the next topic some functions on top of those are maths function uh, on top of uh, integer or floating data type so absolute round as per the naming convention i hope you can able to understand what the things are absolute uh, round trigonometric functions binary okay suppose here yeah, i just took this variable 7 i want to print or i want to do some binary operation on top of that so i'm just declaring another variable called where where b means where b okay anything i can put equal binary function on top of that data type I mean that variable so i'm just implementing this thing i'm just printing this output so this is this is the bin will convert the decimal to binary okay zero b is the keyword for binary it's a binary data type that's why it's zero b and for seven it's triple one so that's why it's returning this one if i just put any other thing then that should be understandable let's put 13 so one three three yeah for 13 the value of binary is one one zero one so this way we can convert from decimal to binary there are lots of mass function available let me show one more thing absolute okay if i just want to do absolute absolute should be working okay for absolute value of 13 it's obviously obviously 13 but if i just use any negative value of 13 then it should be properly working i just want to get the absolute value of minus 13 it should be always 13 okay so for absolute it should be removing the the particular symbol part and it should be only returning the magnitude there are float round round means it should be rounding a particular floating data type suppose 13.13 i'm rounding it It should be returning 13 okay so round means rounding off if it's a flow data type it should be rounding it to the nearest integer okay so it can be flow data type at the beginning but if you are just rounding it off it should be integer data type those are the very basic concepts and this is called function i'm implementing a function on top of a input variable and those are inbuilt functions in python interpreter later when we'll be checking how to create user defined function we can create similar kind of functions at our own it's called user defined function we can check how the same things can be working as per our wish
Okay. Go to the next topic. Built-in function versus method. So today we'll be learning the. I'm not learning the methods actually. So similar kind of stuff. So what you are learning in the function side, there is method as well. But the terminology is a bit different over here in Python. So when we are using Python functions, inbuilt functions, we are just putting the function name within the brace. We are passing the particular input. But while declaring a method, method should be just like this way. So you can put the particular stuffs on which we will be operating the stuffs. So suppose I'll be working. Let me declare a string. Okay, so those all the things have been applicable for string data type, this built in functions and method. So let's declare a string. Suppose ht equal hello world. Everything is in small. Yes, there is a space. Okay. So uh, suppose I need to know the length. So I'm just going to L. Okay, directly putting the function name length of str okay i'm directly printing it over here on top of this I'm not declaring this thing in another variable and all because it's increasing my line of codes what is the issue was okay so st it's st okay okay so the length of this string is 11 so it's returning this one so length is a function it's working on top of a data now let's see what is methods method should be working on top of um, some input dot this is the method name so let's put in this way so this is my input st dot okay if i just put the dot then the id will be showing me what are the available methods i can apply it so i have that advantage if we use this kind of id over here but it's totally uh, the advantages of id only okay so st dot let's choose anyone upper so as of now nothing to pass over here just st dot upper let's check the return result yes the method is updating all the value to caps okay i can put capitalize i think yeah this option of capitalize this will just convert the first keyword as cap and the other keyword should be in small okay i can find a particular value inside a string Suppose I want to check the position of E. Okay, so string it's a zero H is from zeroth position. The string numbering concept it should be starting H as the zeroth position. E is the first position. That's why if I'm just searching with find E, it's giving me the index of one if i just search with h it should be providing zero so zero one this kind of stuffs we can get it by find operator okay okay i can also check if i want to slice the string 
let me show you slicing string is there or not i think it's not there okay if i want to slice the string i can use in this way so suppose i want to print the first character or first two character okay or suppose i want to okay in this way i can just print which character inside the string i want to print i'm printing two means zero one two it should be printing l if i want to print multiple characters suppose i want to print starting from zero Uh, it should be printing five characters starting from zero with element okay it's hello if i just want to put the interval i want to print with an interval of or maybe two by default the interval is one if i want to put two you can see h this l and then o so it's printing with a two interval so it's slicing it with two interval so this way we can slice a string this slicing operation can be used for both string list as well as uh, string list tuple set so the same thing we can call the i mean where we are using this kind of array list is also list will also be using this kind of array string is an array because it's an character array we can say over here similar kind of list is also combination of multiple elements tuple is also combination of multiple elements i'll be coming to this topic later but when we'll be learning the slicing part slice means it's a substring okay HLO, it's a substring from that particular string. So when we will be doing this thing, it's also applicable for list. I mean, a list tuple, this kind of data types. Okay. So over here, I can do this kind of thing. Just let I mean, just um, we can call any kind of substring by calling in this method call this particular string variable then put the square braces and you can put where to pick it up what things to pick up and how to pick up it will be returning by the same way okay okay now what is the next thing immutability so uh, suppose i know what this string one if i just print this output it should be returning e so i'm just putting one index equal one it should be returning e value okay now i want to assign some variable into this position suppose p So it should be throwing me an error because this particular string, I have defined this string with that value. So that value is getting assigned into this string value. If I'm just going to assign this thing with P, then it will not be updated inside the same string. That's why it's called string is immutable in nature. String data type if i define one variable having the string a particular string value is there i cannot update the string value inside this program okay that is why it's not for only string uh, there is some more data types uh, they are available so they are not mutable in nature so string is also resides in those kind of variables i mean uh, data types it's immutable in nature 
the runtime I'm not able to assign a value, but I can change the value. Okay. So it's called immutability in nature. Okay, now what is typecast? Suppose, uh, okay, typecast type cast means I can convert from one particular data type to another data type by using these casting stuffs. So suppose three is a data type integer by default. If I just go ahead with this thing, it should be, three should be string in nature. Let me show you, I'm just copying this thing. It's not copying. Let's do one thing. V equal three. X equal str. V. Okay. Let's print both of them, the data type of both of them. Okay, so over here I'm directly typing this variable. That means the data type of V that is integer in nature. Now this one print type X that is this one. And the data type of X is string. Okay, so it's returning string data type. This is the difference. And we can just convert any kind of data type to another. So this is the way to do it. String integer float. Let me give you an example. This kind of example I used to give to everyone. I mean, every batches. So suppose I'm using an input function to take input from user. OK. Input function is just like this. Enter a integer value so integer i mean this kind of input will be helping the user to get some input from user side while running the code so let's put that particular value inside a variable called x okay so this is the thing enter the integer value then i can put the value 4 Okay, the process has been ended. I can just print it. Print X. Four again. Yes, it's printing it four. Just give me one second. Okay, sorry for that. So I'm collecting something from user and printing this thing over here. Let's do some operation on top of X. So uh, I'm just adding, let's multiply or let's divide X by something. I'm deciding another variable T equal X by Suppose 4, 
okay i'm dividing 4 by 4 so in at the output it should return me 1 okay so x is collecting 4 let me run it 4 it is throwing an error why the error has been coming because now let me tell you the particular value input the particular function input whatever the input i'm just putting it over here by default the function will convert everything into string so i'm entering four but four is not an integer over here let's type the data type in this position print type x I'm printing the data type of X. Let's see. Just I'm commenting this thing out. Comment out means that will be, when I'll be running this thing, that will not be executed. How to comment out in Python? It's hash. Okay. And multi-line comment out is same. That is the same thing, whatever we have learned in SQL slash start. Then you can put multiple lines, but in a single line comment out, you can put hash. So enter integer value, I'm putting four. It's class string. So whatever data I'm putting it over here, it's by default, it should be a string data type. So when it's doing this operation, a string divided by an integer. I'm dividing the string by an integer. Four, I'm just hard. I mean, it's a hard coded integer over here. So this thing is throwing an error. Okay. What to do now? Let's convert this x by this. Uh, we actually we learned what is, I mean, how we can convert one function to another. So let's do this thing x string i'm converting it to integer so x i mean integer of x divide by 4 okay so i'm just converting into x now what is the issue it, it should not throw any error we check print as of now okay it's an indentation error Okay, so four divided by four, one, it's a, it's how we receive the output over here. So this is the thing. Hope that is understandable. It's an example how we can convert from one data type to another data type. It's applicable for everything. Okay. Moving on to the next topic, list. Okay, today we'll be covering list and dictionary. So, what is list now? List is, list is also collection of objects. So, what kind of objects we can... Okay, how list can be declared? I'm just declaring a variable called L equal assigning some list value. So, so this kind of value I can put, print, type, I'm typing what is this L as well as Typing L. <laughs> so L is returning 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the list. Okay. So list contains this kind of array or this kind of elements. So uh, that can be heterogeneous as well. Over here, it's totally pure integer data type. It contains the integer data type. I can also add some string over here. Just like hello. I can put some float numbers as well. 
suppose 4.5 okay i can also in include any boolean data type suppose true there will be no issue so list is a data structure which can supports or which can contains heterogeneous element it can be integer it can be float it can be boolean it can be string okay so that thing i just want to mention so just remember what is what kind of things list can contain okay so list like slicing is the same thing whatever we have learned how to slice list how to slice each and every data structure is the same thing l just put square bracket which element you want to see suppose zeroth element you want to see print zero there list l zero means one this is the zeroth element that is why it's returning one i want to print multiple elements starting from zeroth element so i want to print five elements starting from zero so it's returning one two three four hello one two three four hello okay So slicing part is same. I can also put something over here. This is the interval part. Yeah, the interval is properly visible over here. Mutability. I I showed to you earlier. String is not a mutable data type, but list is a mutable one. Let me show you. so i want to assign some value at l1 position one means currently the first position or in zeroth position is one one position is two over here that means zero one so index one is two i'm assigning something just like i'm assigning some uh, suppose a string over there in this place okay let's print the same value of it so it's updating this to it t you can see this is my updated list elements so list is mutable in nature the same list i have muted okay i haven't muted a new list i'm starting from this list it's not a new list is the same list over here and i can able to mute it what are the different methods applicable on lists so let's put a l value over here okay over here i can directly put let me omit this thing after l i'm just putting a dot so all the methods are been mentioned over here starting with m those m sir just simply those are nothing but methods those should be operated on top of list let's just go ahead with one uh, example what are the things append let's app do append operation i'm putting suppose uh, 20 okay so i just okay not this way l will be appending 20 that is fine i'm just removing this stuff to here now i'm printing only l so this thing will be helping me appending 20 at the end and i'm printing the same list again over here 
you can see by this method append method 20 has been added or appended okay so it's how much powerful the method is you can see insert insert will help in which element I want to insert that element. Suppose I want to insert it at index number four. That means one, zero, one, two, three, four. Before hello, it should be inserted over here. Okay, let's try it. Okay, so one, zero, one, two, three, four. This is in fourth position, 20 has been inserted. <coughs> So, this insert should be working in this way. Similar kind of stuff, there are lots of methods available that should be open top of string. Pop, pop means popping out some element. Count means counting, helping you out. A particular element is repeated how many times? Shortly, shorting that particular list. Okay. So, I'm not just going ahead with one by one as of now. I'm just going to give you basic and brief concepts on each of the data type because leads is very much useful as well. When we'll be learning data frames in pandas and all, there you can see the usage of list is very much. So uh, just uh, try this thing to be, I mean, just quickly, I mean, learn it. As of now, it's, I mean, when using the same thing as a data engineering perspective, we can see the uh, small usage of each of the part as well. So that is why I try to cover this part at the beginning. Dictionary, it, it's another data type. So dictionary will be helping to store the data in key value pair. Okay, so how to define a dictionary? Suppose the dictionary D, D is a variable. Dictionary should be always starting with a curly brace and end with a curly braces. And inside that, it should be key value pair. Just like in list, tuple, string, those kind of data type, we are calling a particular element of the data type by its index value. Okay. But in dictionary, to call an element, we just need to call the index. Let's let's declare a dictionary. So, uh, one is a key. Suppose value can be a string so this is key value pair key colon value and this is a single element of the dictionary each of each and every dictionary i mean each and every element inside the dictionary should be a key value pair so one colon b means one is a key b is a value let's put a so one is a key, A is a value. Let me put two B. I'm just giving the character number this this way in this manner. We want to print D. Okay, I have already printed it. Let's call, if I want to print, if I want to get output one. So this is the same thing I just want to mention. For a list, for string, whatever we have learned, we can call a particular value by its index position. Over here, I can call a particular value by its key. So I just call the key, it's returning me the value. I can call a particular, I mean, call this two, it will be returning me B. Okay, so this is the thing. I can call the entire element as well. I mean, the entire key value pair as well. There, I think I need to put D dot values, copies, items. Let's try with items.
should be dictionary items only. No. So in dictionary, the three kind of methods are there actually. If I just want to print items, it will be print entire stuff items. If I just want to print d dot values, it should be only values a and b. If I want to print only the keys, it should be printing me the keys. Okay, but the main fundamental stuff is key can be stored the values. I mean, one key should be mapped with one value, and I can call any values by. I mean, there is no such indexing stuff. Rather, a key can be used to call a particular value. Okay. And, okay, one more thing. In dictionary, keys should be immutable in nature. Key cannot be muted. Once the dictionary is declared, key value cannot be muted. But the particular value can be muted in nature. So key value, we cannot put any mutable data type over here, but value can be a mutable data type. Let me show you an example. So let's declare the key value as a list. Okay, suppose four, five, six. So it's a list. It's showing an error. So list cannot be in key position. I can put any string over here. Let me put A, B, C. Vomiting the stuff from here. Okay. A, B, C. It should be fine because string is string is mutable letter type uh sorry immutable letter type so that's why string can be used over here value can be mutable in nature there'll be no issue i'm declaring a list over here there'll be no issue Okay, so this is one more important concept while declaring dictionary, keys cannot be mutable in nature, but value can be mutable in nature. Okay. Okay, any doubt till now? Anything? Actually, we are just... Uh, by the end of this today's class. So tomorrow we'll be learning the rest of the data type quickly. It is tuple and set and the other Python basic steps, just like conditional operator, looping part, user defined functions. And after that, in the next day, we'll be learning classes and all. I mean, and especially object oriented programming over there. Okay, so any doubt for today's session? Okay, if there is nothing, so let's connect tomorrow with the rest of the stuffs. Okay, thanks, thanks everyone. Bye bye. Thank you.